Hello and welcome everybody. This is the third episode of the Reyero series. It's Shoya here and the plan for this episode is to build a motel for this town. As you have noticed, there are not many people in town. Main Street has a few stores and that's pretty much it. I have added a few block services working as residential, as these shops need workers. So this motel will bring some tourists into town and with that some more activity. In this video I'd like to talk about the American Motel. When people from around the globe think of the US highway system, images of the motels along Route 66 is often what comes to mind. These motels were typically family owned and operated. They made its way deep into the American culture. Increasingly, these icons are being abandoned, repurposed or even demolished. With that in mind, I would like to take a moment to reflect on how these icons of American innovation came to be and eventually fell from favor. Like many innovations, motels were created out of necessity. With the automobile being the favorite type of transportation, the American people's desire to explore was at an all-time high. As the number of people on the road increased, the cost of the inns increased too. So much so that they eventually became too expensive for the average American consumer. By 1933, America was roaring back from the Great Depression, but many people were still out of work and the roadways needed improvement. The desire to explore was put on hold until the economy was stable again. Many people were put to work building the roadways and electrical infrastructure that millions of Americans crave. In 1939, Steinbeck envisioned the roadway that crossed the country from Chicago to Los Angeles the US Highway 66, or Route 66. At this time, some of the earliest motel concepts were developing in the Western US. There were some Americans on the road, and then there were rooms for rent. Here is where the necessity for motels comes in. However, because of the World War II, the US motel industry had its second big recession. Many of the things required for a road trip were rationed for the war, such as gasoline, oil and tires. All of it went to support the troops. The post-war was the golden age of the American motel. American families were ready to explore the country once again. Neon lights, bright signs and eye-catching flair. The name motel has stuck to this day to refer to hotels that are directly off the roadway. But as you know, the good times came to an end for the majority of them. By the early 60s, the interstate highway system was very advanced and had circumvented most of the state highway systems. Family-owned motels were being replaced by large chains like Holiday Inn. Today, most Americans prefer the ease and the reliability of the interstate highway systems and the numerous chain hotels that sit directly off of it. 
you can still find driving motels typically at the intersection of interstate and state highway which is the case of the one that I'm building here. Eventually I will work on the interstate. Speaking about the city skylines and this build of Reiero specifically, I have decided to go for the motel as it can easily be found in many of these small desert towns. Most guests do not stay for long. This place is still family owned. It's definitely in need of investment, but their profits are not high and they will have more competition in this town. I plan to build at least three, counting with the hotel in Main Street. For this one I have decided to add a larger parking lot, specifically for truckers, as they need plenty of space to maneuver. The rooms are in a different building, on the side, as guests must check in at the front office, which I gave an interior. I have been a big fan of this type of thing. Expect more buildings like that. The rooms are old and cheap. It's the only way to compete with the hotel located at Main Street, I'm getting all the attention from incoming travelers, which are not many these days. People take the interstate, which is faster, leaving these small towns more isolated. Traffic won't be an issue here. There is no security in sight, so homeless people are spotted here at night, especially in the winter. One of them even brought an old mattress and decided to live there until the owner tells him otherwise. So nothing is fancy over there. Some truckers even prefer to sleep in their cabins rather than paying to stay and deal with the uncomfortable beds. You won't even find a place to eat there, it's just the basics. Most telephones don't work, same with the TVs. They advertise having cable TV and phones. But once you check in, you are lucky if anything works as it should. Needless to say that nearly every night the sheriffs stop by for a routine check. It's a place known for drugs, alcohol and prostitution. The sheriffs are also sometimes part of the problem. It's easy to be corrupt around this side of the town at night. Well, if you are still watching, I hope you don't feel like you have wasted your time. It's a possibility, and I don't blame you. However, in case you are one of the few that actually enjoy it, consider hitting the like button. I don't have to explain why these days. You know why it's important. And considering nearly half of the viewers are not subscribed, yet they return and watch new videos, consider as well staying subscribed and you can watch this town grow in full detail, eventually revealing the good and the bad. Stories will be told. I will believe in you with the final cinematics. Until next time, take care y'all.